Hello and welcome to Faithley Parish Church. I'm Gregor McIntyre and I'm delighted to have you taking part in our online service this week. Today is Sunday the 29th of November. It is the first Sunday of Advent and so we will begin getting ready for Christmas. But because it is also the Sunday nearest St Andrew's Day, we will have several Scots abroad taking part in the service that we might be encouraged to remember our nation in prayer and to pray for those we know who live far from us. Let's begin our worship with our first hymn that reminds us to make way for Jesus. Let's pray together. Great and loving Father, we give you thanks that we have time to prepare for Christmas. There is time yet to get those gifts we want to give, to write and send cards to those we keep in touch with. There is yet time to look for recipes and plan our contribution to our Christmas table. And we give you thanks, Father, that there is each day between now and Christmas Day time for us to come close to you, to drop our eyes from all that we do in our daily life and give our moment to you, to seek your spirit, making our spirits alive, turning to your Bible, to see the words that offer guidance and help, words of celebration and comfort, words that bring us up short, but always promising mercy. Almighty God, in this time of preparation, might we be sure you are with each of us because it is your desire to keep those angels singing peace between heaven and earth, 
through your Son. So we thank you for the loving family whose company we look forward to at Christmas. And we're mindful that the concessions made by government protecting us from COVID means that we will not be able to see everyone. So bless the kind words in our letters. Bless the good nature of our phone calls. Bless the technology and our use of it when we make video calls to one another. That though they are not the same, yet we can find one another close because our love is sufficient to overcome the distance. Just as the gift of your son was your way of demonstrating your love for all people in the world 2,000 years ago and every person, man, woman and child, born since then. Prepare room in our hearts for you, Lord, and we pray through Jesus, our Saviour and Redeemer. Amen. Our Bible reading this week is going to be read to us by a Scot living abroad. Michael Rattigan grew up in Clydebank in Faithley and was part of our Boys' Brigade. But now, having worked in Japan, he is settled there with family. And I'm delighted to welcome Michael to read from Mark's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 32 to 37. Good morning from Japan, everyone. I hope you're all keeping well during these difficult times. This is a reading from Mark 13, verses 32 to 37. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the cock crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Stay safe, everyone. And as difficult as it might be to imagine right now, I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas. Goodbye. Michael, thank you very much for preparing and sending that reading to us. I hope that you and Sayaka have a great time over the coming winter period. Watch. Watch is the last word of our Bible reading. Watch because we are being told you just never know when the boss is going to turn up. I don't know if you've ever had that experience at work. I, I can't say that's been a thing I've worried about particularly, but you may have had a boss that you wanted to make sure you were at least looking busy when he or she turned up on the shop floor or in the office or wherever. So you'll know the sense that the servants are expected to feel in the parable. At the very least, when the master returns, you want to be seen to be at your duties. Now, Jesus doesn't need to explain where the master of the household is going, because it doesn't matter. Because in fact, it's not really about any master going away for a period of weeks or months. It's about the interval between Jesus in this world and Jesus coming back to us. Advent is where we are now in the Christian year. Advent by tradition begins the Christian year. And so this time we're looking back at who our Jesus is, we're thinking of who he is for us now and we're looking ahead 
and we're looking ahead this morning. The parable that's read is not simply about get on with things in good order. It's get on with things because you never know when Jesus is going to come back. Such detail is for the Father to know. Jesus in, this, in his earthly life didn't have that detail. He didn't understand all that his Father was requiring. And yet, this parable does suggest he knew something of what God was going to do sometime. So, get about the business of being a Christian. Get about it. This, uh, this pandemic is not a holiday season for Christians. It is, perhaps, a particularly important period of time for Christians to show that they live out every day the virtues of Christianity. There's no time to wait, no better time to begin than right now. So we're meant to love like there's to no tomorrow. Forgive like we can't wait till tomorrow. Be kind because, well, we can be kind again tomorrow. We're called to get on with things right now. When we look ahead to the return of Jesus, we're looking for the final fulfilment not just of another promise, but of the promises that end this world and time as we understand it. The return of Jesus will not be as an insignificant seeming child in some other part of the world, wrapped up in swaddling bands. When Jesus comes back, it will be as a victor as a conquering hero, with a train behind him of angels and the saints in glory, coming to demonstrate that he is a victor over death and the grave and over sin. So whilst we have the opportunity, it is as well to be getting on with it, to be getting on with the business of living for Jesus, of being a disciple. At the edge of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus didn't say, come with me when you feel like it. Come with me when you're ready. Yes, you can finish those nets. I'm going this way. Just run after me. He put out a much more urgent call. Leave your nets. Come follow me to be fishers of men. There's always urgency in Jesus, for good reason. There are passages known in the Gospels as the would-be followers, the ones who say, just a minute, Jesus, and, and then I'll come. And they look back. They look back to things that might claim their time. They look back to that which they perhaps think is a priority, and they put Jesus, at the very least, on the back burner, if not, back up out of sight, not to be looked for until there's an emergency. In Faithfully just now, there are quite a number of people who have their crises visiting now. And I've been able to keep in touch with a few of them, not just to wish well, but to promise my prayers for parents who are ill, for worry for a younger family. Because the crisis of the pandemic brings not only the virus, but job loss, troubles with mental health and self-esteem. These little crises won't shake the world, but they certainly shake the lives of those enduring them. If I can pray for my neighbour and residents in Faithly. You can pray for your neighbour. You can pray with an urgency because 
You want to let our God know it matters, and it matters now, not in some future time. It matters today. And you should have the same urgency about your Christian living. It matters today that you choose to follow Jesus. It matters this minute that you have declared yourself a Christian. It matters in the moments and hours ahead of you this day how you will live and how you will appear before the eyes and the ears of others who will look for Jesus in the lives of those who claim he is their Saviour and Lord. So be at the door like the parable tells us. Be at the door watching and if you can't see Jesus, be the Jesus for someone. Because you can be sure that Jesus is coming back. That's all part and parcel of God's great plan. For Jesus was in the beginning and the creation. He was in the world. At the moment he was born in that manger, to that manger in Bethlehem. And you can be sure he is coming back to discover what his servants have been doing. Don't be found wanting. Decide now is the moment. Amen. Friends, our next hymn comes with a tune that Scotland likes to claim as its own and is sung around the world as a firm favourite. For that reason, being so close to St Andrew's Day, it's time to sing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see
three, two, one. Our intimations are as follows. Firstly, gifts from our church to our, our local community. Either a new gift bought for a boy or girl in a gift bag and brought to the church by Tuesday the 8th of December, or a gift of money towards the fund we are contributing to Eden Barnet Primary School that they can buy Chromebooks uh, for use in the school and in the event that lockdown happens to some classes, some children, or heaven forbid, the whole school. Other intimations include, uh, just a reminder, that next week, the 6th of December, is a Sunday that would normally be a day in which we commemorate communion. So if you would like to make sure that in time for watching the service next week, you have a cup, a glass or a mug with something to drink, and a biscuit, a cracker or a piece of bread to break and tear and eat, then you can join in with our online communion service. Then on the 13th of uh, December, we will have our blue Christmas service. This year, I have had great help from Margaret Harrigan and from Margaret Bell knitting blue Christmas stars, which are on offer to families whom you know are grieving this year. Get a message to me any way you can and let me know if you have a family you would like to send a star to as a promise of our prayers and a reminder of Jesus' peace that was the angel song when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Then on the 20th of December, we'll have our nativity presentation and they're not Sundays, but there will still be an online Christmas Eve service, a Christmas Day message as well before the next Sunday after Christmas Day. I'll remind you of these dates again next week. Now we're nearly at the end of our service, but another Scot now living abroad is going to lead us in her prayer. And I'm delighted to say that Janice Adams Quinn is going to lead us in prayer. Janice grew up in Clydebank and her family will be watching this morning to see and hear the prayer that we will all share in together. Hello, Gregor. I have lived in Canada since 1975 and um, even although Canada has been very good to me, my heart still belongs in Scotland. The prayer that I am going to read today is um, one from a prayer book that I have been reading and it keeps me focused on God's Word and, um, and God. Most gracious almighty God, full of loving kindness and long-suffering, we confess to thee with our whole heart our neglect and forgetfulness of thy commandments, our wrongdoing and speaking and thinking, the hurts we have done to others and the good we have left undone. O Lord, blot out the transgressions that are against us for thy goodness and thy glory and for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. All glory goes to God. Thank you. Janice, thank you very much. Janice, from Canada, you have sent your message via WhatsApp, and I know that recording yourself onto your phone was a bit of a task to begin with, but you did it tremendously well, and I'm so grateful that you were able to take part in our service today and not simply be one of our regular viewers who is able to join us because we're online these days. Thanks for what you've done this week. Friends, now we are going to sing our final hymn. It is one that reminds us that the Jesus whom we call our friend is part of a great and mighty God, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, are remembered in the hymn, Immortal, Invisible.
And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the God who was and is and is yet to be, be the God that blesses you in your every day. Amen.